Hey guys, I'm Colin Austin, the host of the WHOA GNV podcast. The podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. And you are watching Take One. My dad was in the Air Force and I grew up bouncing around the first 18 years of my life. Okay. You know, I was lucky if I spent more than a couple years in one place, right? I went to three high schools in four years. It's a lot, you know, and on somebody going through their teens, that's hard because you have girlfriends, you have friends, and you got to leave people. And, you know, looking back, the benefit of that was, you know, I have this ability, I think, to connect with people. If you're in the Air Force or any military branch, and you want to make friends, <laughs> you got to make friends fast. And you got to be willing to go up to people and shake their hands and say, hey, how are you doing? My name's Colin. Mm-hmm. When I got to the University of Florida, my four years at UF, that was the longest I had ever lived in one place. <laughs> so by then, Gainesville was home, man. From 2000 to 2004, Gainesville was home. And I was ready to stay. I was ready to make it home. When I decided that I was going to be an entrepreneur, I was like, if I'm going to be a business owner, if I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to do it my way. Right. Not the way it should be done. Right. <laughs> So I was like, you know, even in our waiting area, like let's have corduroy beanbag chairs. And let, so we replaced the couches. And then okay. I was like, you know what I really like? I really like Christmas all the time. I'm gonna have Christmas lights everywhere. <laughs> so I had Christmas lights all through the dealership, the Tijuana lights, the little bulbs and yeah. stuff like that. Man, I just wanted it to be, you know, mine. For those of you guys that don't, don't know, I also new, own New Scooters for Less. So it's a scooter dealership in Gainesville, right? And this dealership is, you know, our demographic is college students. So I wanted to make it a place where college students wanted to be. And I realized that we actually made that happen when a bunch of college students were in our waiting area on the beanbag chairs uh, doing their homework. Mm, And I was like, hey, uh, you guys good? Do you guys need your scooter service or anything? And they're like, no, we're just here to do our homework in your beanbag chairs. Love that. (laughs) So I was like, all right. I feel like when I, when I heard that, I felt like we had made a place that was homey, uh, you know, a a place where college students wanted to be. And and that's what I was going for. I was the college student who was trying to figure out what they were going to do with the rest of their life. Everybody goes through that. I didn't fit the mold of what was supposed to be. You, you go to you know you go to high school, you graduate, you go to college, you get a degree, you graduate, you get the corporate job. And I'm trying to, you know, go to the career showcase and I got my suit and tie on and I got my resume that's all per- perfect. I hate wearing a suit. I only had one suit. <laughs> I, hated, I hated wearing it. And I'm going in there and I'm meeting these recruiters and I'm shaking their hands and they're looking me in the eye and they're going, oh, so Colin, like, why do you want to work for our company? And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh. I don't, you know, and yeah. like, and that was the, the vibe. I was like, man, I don't want to work for this company. From that point on, it was really like light bulbs going off, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sitting at that bus stop again. That RTS bus is coming through and it drives by with those words, full bus, right? And I was just like, you know what? This has happened to me all of my college career. Same. And it was like, what can, can something be done about this? If you had a car and you're trying to park it on campus, good luck, yeah. <laughs> you know, cause you would just drive around in circles and not be able to park. And, and then when those light bulbs were going off and like I said, some other opportunities, you know, I had met an individual, uh, who would become my first business partner. This guy was making money out of his dorm room through a process called drop shipping. Everybody knows what drop shipping is in 2021 and 2004. He was a pioneer and I was really captivated by it. And I kept asking questions, right? I'm like, dude, you're a genius. <laughs> but I just kept asking him questions, asking him questions. And some of the questions that were coming up were, hey, how, how much more money would you make if you cut out that middleman? And finally, I like threw it out there. I'm like, hey man, like I know you got two years of school left, uh, but I'm done. And so what if we like go after this whole scooter retail thing, like motor scooters for UF, have a retail business, but continue to do what you're doing on the wholesale side, combine it and just create this company. And man, it was, it was a hit. I mean, really from the start. And I just realized that I'm like, man, this is, this is something that I love, that I, I love the game of entrepreneurship. I was in it. I was working harder than I'd ever worked in my entire life hours and hours beyond any normal nine to five job and i was loving it (laughs) you know so i just knew that it was in my blood uh there were some other you know things that just kind of clicked right in line during that time and it was like all right like let's go out and let's just do this my my parents at the time they were very much like 
no. <laughs> like, what are you thinking? You just went through college. Like, go work for the companies. Have a, you know, stable income and that security. You know, like, have that. And I was like, yeah, I'm like 21 years old. What's the worst that could happen? Like, I could fail and lose more time than money yeah. that I was investing into it. And if I mess up and it doesn't work out, okay, well, then I'll just go get the corporate job next year. Jumped into something, you know, I didn't know anything about. And who knew we would create a scooter empire. But the podcast is the same thing. I was participating in these conversations with, you know, UF, Santa Fe College, um, Chamber of Commerce, uh, City of Gainesville. Um, but, you know, as an entrepreneur, I was leaving a lot of the times thinking, okay, this is great, but like, what can I do? The answer was, you know what? Like, I should put my marketing ability to use and create a podcast. Like, let's show off what makes Gainesville so great. And that's its people. Three primary missions really came from that. One was, but let's keep our top six talent coming out of the University of Florida here in Gainesville. This is a college town. Everybody wants to come to school here and then they want to leave, right? And then the second problem is, you know, how do we attract, you know, more talent, like experienced talent and investor dollars to gain. So how do we get them here? Third is how do we build more connection and collaboration within the business community? And so when I was thinking of these, these missions, I'm like, dude, a podcast will do all of that. Let's do a podcast. So that's why we started this podcast. Core values are, you know, core values create culture, right? Culture is the lifeblood of any organization, period. One of the very basic values that I've had in my life is just treat other people the way you want to be treated. That's so simple. That was the first core value of this business ever. You know, honestly, the words grind, hustle, success, execution, okay. those aren't values to me. Those are just really cool signs that are just up on the wall that somebody gave me as a gift. And for me, when I when I see words like that, you know, the, the biggest word that comes from those words as a value would be perseverance. Right? Okay. It's like persevere. I mean, COVID-19 and everything that we've been through in the last year and a half, that's an mm. example of perseverance. If there's one business that should have gone out of business this year, it's new scooters for less. And when they take all classes and put them on Zoom, it's easy to go out of business fast. And I'm telling you that multiple times over the last year and a half, I thought we were going out of business. But then that's where the core comes in. Right. The Jesus loves you bracelet. Dude, I'm telling you, Jesus got us through every piece of that. Every time that I thought we were done, every time that I thought we were done, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. And that is what like really has truthfully made 2021 explosive, mm. explosive. If I could do only this, if I could just have conversations like this all day, every day, I would do it, man. Mm -hmm. I love this. I can continue to do this, but this isn't the main gig. Heck, I'm telling God, hey, you see this microphone right here? I could disciple to a lot of people. I could like really preach your message and your love and your hope. I could really do that with this. <laughs> the answer from God at the moment has been no. I want you on the in the scooter dealership on the ground floor, but why? Get back on the ground floor, take care of these customers and get through this. And this was in, you're talking March of 2021. As soon as I said, okay, God, April made money. May made money. Those are like May is a month that we normally don't make any money. We had the best June ever. July had the best July ever. It's it's crazy, man. I think that's just a lesson in you know complete surrender. Yes, there's prayer in it. Well, a big thing for me is prayer journaling. Mm. That's something. This is something that I started in January of 2020. And I had never done it before. I'd never done that before. And I felt that God was actually calling me to do that. And I did it. And guess what? I, I look back at that and I'm like, man, that was God preparing me for what was going to happen in 2020. COVID and the business and going through what I think is the greatest trial of my entire entrepreneurial career. When it first started happening, I was the one who really jumped out front to serve, right? Mm -hmm. And I started interviewing all the other businesses. I was doing like these little Zoom podcasts and like, hey, like what's going on with your business? Like, tell us, like, how's this impacted you? And what I realized the most was that I was the one who needed to be picked up. I lost so much of my team through the process. I think a lot of that had to do with me being super transparent. I didn't want to like get to the day where we were gonna be completely out of money and say, hey, don't show up to work tomorrow. Obviously we made it through, which is great. Super, super grateful to make it through. And not only made it through, but like excelling, right. you know, which is a blessing. For me, 2021 has just been completely redefining 
what people expect, what customers expect, what team members expect. I've learned a lot through the process. I have a sign out front that says, hey guys, when you walk into the showroom, I'm the only salesperson. And if I'm on the phone, like I'm not ignoring you. I want to help you. Please take a look around. And as soon as I get off the phone, I'll be right with you. And so I'm setting those expectations up front. It's also helped me create that that structure that I want in my life. When I get all these phone calls, it's like, I can't believe you're not open on the weekend. My kids have travel soccer on the weekend and I'm like going to church on Sunday morning. I'm sure there's other dealerships open on the weekend, but right now this one's not gonna be because of the things that I value and because I've created this dealership because I wanted to be an entrepreneur, because I wanted to be a business owner and because I wanted to do things my way. The pandemic brought me full circle back around. I'm now the head, I'm the owner, I'm the head sales manager, I'm HR, mm. I'm the head janitor, all of the roles all over again. So talk about full circle. I'm gonna look back at my time here to this pandemic and I'm gonna say that was the greatest year of my entire life. Mm. Persevering through that is what has defined me today and who I have become as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as a father, as a husband, all of it. What was great about kind of getting back into it after all of these years and really being absent from the sales floor for yeah. many years um, was that I was really looking at everything through a new lens, right? And this lens was, so if I'm going to have an exit, if I'm gonna plan for an exit, what does it need to look like now, right? Before, when I was very growth focused, it was like, all right, how do we, 10, 10 employees, 15, 20, 25, 30, how do, like, and now, because I'm looking at it through a completely different lens and know that that's not what I want to do with the rest of my life, that this podcast is really where I would like to focus my time. I looked at that as like, if I were an investor who was going to buy this company, but I want to have a team of 25, I feel like when it's a team of 10, a, a team of 10, it's like, you really, you really depend on your teammates, right? It is teamwork to the core. I love the team that we have right now. It's just, it just feels like that. It feels like a team. Uh, what's going to be interesting is that I'm probably going to go through this entire process of thinking of how I can exit this business and sell it for a lot of money. I'll just end up creating this cash cap, <laughs> right? And I'll, I'll just end up holding on to it and then going and doing this and not, not being here. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens moving forward. Mm. You know, one of my, one of my favorite entrepreneurs, his name's Alex Willis. He actually used to play uh, wide receiver during Spurrier National Championship era. Like one of the sayings that I've always resonated with him was that you have to go through a valley to get to the top of another mountain. I'm looking forward to the next mountain. I want to build a studio, attracting guests to come to Gainesville to do this. Like that's what I want, because it goes back to those original missions of attracting people to Gainesville. Well, if I can get big names to come here and have an interview with me in Gainesville, uh, in fact, I'll tell you this, I could interview some bigger names via Zoom mm. and I've chosen not to because I want it. I want the interview to happen in person. You know, I've just watched this place blossom into this entrepreneurial hub. You know, I look back to 2004 when we started New Scooters for Less. Mm -hmm. We had nothing, man. We had to figure it all out on our own. There were no incubators, accelerators, resources at the city. Now you look around and there's startups everywhere. There's companies that are just, you know, taking that risk. I, like I can't, I can't even pick one business because there's so many that get me, that get me extremely excited. Mm. All I can say is that I'm just excited for Gainesville and, and the yeah. community and the entrepreneurial community, and that, that's supply. what's exciting for me is seeing somebody go from nothing to living out their dream and just being able to know these people and to meet with them and to have conversations with them is the greatest honor of my life for sure. So guys, be sure to check us out by going to whoagnv.com. You can get linked to all of our social media outlets through there. Um, definitely go to whoagnv.tv to see the video version of the podcast. Uh, listen to everything that's happening in our area. And we'll continue to bring you those businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs>